the show Star Trek, famously calling space the final frontier. But for many scientists, the final frontier is actually right here on planet Earth. 80% of all life on Earth lives in the ocean. And now a team of scientists have designed a ship that will explore the oceans in the same way that the Enterprise explored space. It's called Sea Orbiter, and construction on that ship is set to begin by the end of the year. The project has been 12 years in the making, and now it's finally becoming a reality. Ariel Fuchs is Program and Communications Director for Sea Orbiter, and he joins us from Washington, D.C. Ariel, it's great to have you here, and as I was saying, this is 12 years in the making. It's certainly not going to be a cheap project, so explain to all of us, how is it being funded? Yes, good morning, Thomas. Uh, it's, uh, it's a project that uh, started 10 years ago, but that, uh, uh, it's really becoming an industrial and science project since uh, five years. Uh, it's privately mainly founded by uh, private uh, investors uh, such as Rolex and uh, private sectors people. Uh, but it do has a lot of uh, interaction with the, uh, the science community, as you understand, and the education side is also very heavy on this project. Hey, we're, seeing uh, the, we're seeing the images. It's absolutely a gorgeous piece of machinery that's going to work as a sea orbiter that floats below and above the surface, as we're seeing right here. Explain to all of us, though, what is the main mission of the sea orbiter? What do you hope it will accomplish? Well, as, as far as the design, it's, uh, it's, it's come from a very well-known architect in France called Jacques Rougerie, and he's very, he was very into the underwater uh, history of Man Under the Sea program and uh, the Conch Shelf program by Cousteau's and the, the Sea Lab program by the Americans. So it's basically a nomadic underwater house drifting in the ocean, uh, allowing the, the scientists, the explorers, to better understand what's below the uh, surface of water because uh, we've known very little of the ocean at large and uh, we still a lot, we've got a lot to explore to you. Uh, explain to all of us what type uh, of uh, team, how many uh, explorers can exist on the sea orbiter at one time to be operating in full capacity and what type of experiments projects do they do they want to do well it's basically a, a 18 member crew um, that will operate the ship or the vessel uh, seven of them they will be operating uh, members and the, the rest of it will be scientists uh, divers, aquanauts, or maybe astronauts training under the sea. And, uh, well, the range of science that can be done on board is uh, very uh, large, from traditional oceanography to um, biological marine sciences, uh, plankton monitoring, uh, sea interface, exchange gases uh, to better understand the, uh, the effect of global warming. So there's a lot of uh, science to be done, and, and related to that, a lot of education. Ariel, the design looks very sci-fi, so explain <laughs> to everybody uh, what type of testing has been done to make sure that something like that could exist in the oceans, especially in major storms. Yes, well, the, uh, the design is, is, a, uh, is an answer to uh, better allow people uh, live under the water. And this vertical design is, uh, is meant to be, you know, the safetyest platform for living under the sea. And it's been testing in Marine Tech in Norway, which is one of the Europe's largest uh, facility for testing ships and platforms uh, and in the sea. So it's quite safe. It's been tested a lot. Certainly looks really cool. So we're waiting for it to sail into an ocean near us. Ariel Fuchs, Sea Orbiter Project. Thank you, sir. Appreciate well, it. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you for your time. Thank you.